Morning. Bonjour. Magandan Umaga. Welcome to paradise. Not. Anyway, if you own a Mark III Ford Potato, today I have an engine here. I've already taken the manifold off. If you want to see that video, by the way, you can watch that somewhere here. Right. These engines, this is a two litre petrol Duratec. The excited engine. <laughs> you know what I mean? We couldn't all afford the ST220, could we? Some of us had to have the poverty engines. The, the, the actual petrol engines that turn themselves into, uh, what are them oil burners? Two strokes? Is that what they are? Yeah, you, you got the pleasure of carrying a few extra litres of oil in your trunk. Anyway, I'm going to change something on this today, or we'll have a look at it at least, because it's something I've never actually come across. We've got a whole fleet of these Mark 3s here. They're rental cars and they're still going, a lot of them are about 05 plates. But never once in the history of my life have I ever had anything to do with a timing chain. So that says to me, they must be a pretty good timing chain set up. So now I've got this engine out, I'm going to have a look at this chain and see what kind of job it is to change. Because if you ever get a head gasket to change, well, you'd probably change the engine rather than the head gasket. They're quite a job to do. But if you ever, ever did need to change one of these chains for whatever reason, I'm going to find out how to do it. Now, in the previous video I'd done, I removed the serpentine belt. I also removed the power steering pump, which sits just here. To remove this chain, from this engine, you need to remove the power steering pump or at least unbolt it because part of the pump bolts onto this timing casing. And let me just point out, I'm changing this chain with the engine on the bench so it's easy. When this engine is in the car, there is not a lot of room down here. It's quite narrow, so it ain't gonna be much fun to do. But obviously, having the engine here on the bench, I can actually show it a lot easier than what it would be inside the car. So we're gonna start off by assuming that your serpentine belt is off, your power steering pump is un unbolted or removed, and also that your engine mount has been removed. Your high tension leads are gonna to have to come off, okay? You're gonna to have to be a little bit careful when you prise these out because they can get stuck to the spark plugs and you can break them if you're not careful. That one's actually come out okay. Right, we'll shove them out of the way, stay. These poppers here, they're actually, they, they, these are what actually hold the big cover on top of your engine. A lot of the cars we've got, the covers got flung in the dustbin, so they, they, there's nothing goes on these anymore, but you've got to remove them anyway. Remember, if you don't know where things go, use your phone and take a picture of how it was to start with, then you'll know where everything goes back and what screws they go back on. You've now got something like 15 8 mil bolts to undo. You'll notice that once you've actually unscrewed these little bolts, they don't come out. They're still they're, they're held in there by a retainer, which is pretty handy. I quite like that idea. One thing to remember here, when all your bolts are undone, there's a rubber seal between this plastic rocker cover and the cylinder head the cover can get stuck to the cylinder head. And so you don't want to actually break it or crack it trying to get it off, because they can get, be quite stuck sometimes. So I'm gonna see if this one actually, there's a little bit I can prise on here. I'm gonna see if I can actually prise it off. Yeah, it's gone, flipping heck. Off she comes. You see, you've only got like a, a rubber seal running all the way around and there's another, there's another like three little rubber seals in the middle where your spark plugs go through. These seals over time, they get like brittle and flattened as well with the heat and then they start to leak. 
So you have to change these anyway, especially when they start pissing oil out the sides. Woohoo! <laughs> There's our chain. Mind you, I didn't, I didn't mention, did I? This engine lost all its oil because the driver ground it out on something and cracked the sump. The engine lost all its oil and he seized the engine up. With a little bit of persuasion, we've managed to sort of like unseize it so I can at least turn it over now. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. Right, this water pump pulley, I'm going to undo these 10 mil bolts with an air gun. But in the car, you can't obviously do that. So you might want to get like a bar in there, like that, to hold the, hold the pulley. Then undo them, like that, you see? But to save time, <coughs> let's just air gun them out. <coughs> there. And the same for your auxiliary belt pulley. <coughs> what a now, back off. Look at that. Look at this multi-link timing chain. So how is it Ford can put a well-designed, expensive timing chain in what is really a mediocre, boring engine, yet you get companies like BMW putting rubbish timing chains in their cars which are stretching and snapping? I don't get it. Hang on a minute. That's better. You see the lighting is coming from over there. With the engine around this way, it's a bit dark. These are things I've got to think about. Okay, 21 mil socket on the crank bolt. You see this little hole here, and there's another hole at six o'clock. You put a pin through that hole and into this hole, okay? That's so you can time this pulley up because your, crank, your crankshaft sensor gets its pickup off this disc at the back of the pulley. But first up, I'm gonna turn this engine over. You really want this hole about 45 degrees before that hole. At the back of the engine, underneath like the tensioner and the alternator, there's a 10 mil bolt. You can crack that off and remove that bolt because this is the hole where our timing pin has to go. So I'll take this out. You really do need the correct timing pin for this engine. If it's the wrong length, it's not gonna work. It's a specific timing pin which fits in this hole. So you've got to get that. But that will go in that hole and you'll screw it into the threads, just finger tight like that. Then back on your crank pulley, turn it engine over clockwise. I did say clockwise. And until the crankshaft bolts up, butts up against that pin. You won't be able to go no further. You'll notice now, you can now insert a timing pin through this crank pulley hole into the hole in the back. And that's that sorted out. I'm gonna lock both the camshafts now with this setting bar. This is a standard setting bar. You could even make one of these yourself if you wanted to. But yeah, this bar will sit on the top of the cylinder head and if everything's timed up properly, it should slot straight into the back of these camshafts. It might need a tiny bit of persuasion. That one's gone in. Now let's see if we can pop it into this one. Oh, look at that. Perfect. That's all you would have to do to check your valve timing was right on this engine, if it were in the car. But we're gonna go a step further now, and we're gonna take the chain off, just to have a look. I'm gonna to attempt to remove this crankshaft bolt. This bolt, is 100 newton meters plus 90 degrees torque. So it's pretty damn tight. You need a flipping good air gun. If you don't have an air gun and you had to undo this with a bar, you're gonna to have to take the starter motor off and lock the flywheel with something pretty substantial. That's why it probably pays to have a bloody good battery or air gun. Anyway, let's see if this undoes. <coughs> flipping it. I'm absolutely amazed that come out so easily. 
I thought that was going to be, get out of it, I thought that was going to be a lot harder than that. There is no keyway on this pulley, so really that should just, yeah, it just spins, you see. But that, that'll pull straight off. But you see the little, the little grooves here? That's for your, camshaft, your crankshaft sensor. So this pulley has got to be fitted in the right position. Hence that's why you pin it up with that hole. So, three 13mm bolts up where the engine mount would go. Let's whack these out. There you go. So much easier with an air gun. They're all the same length. And there's another 13mm bolt, right sort of like opposite the aircon pump. Bingo. There is now approximately about another 19 8mm headed bolts to remove. I could at this point play you some uh, mind bending music to send you all into a trance while I undo all these bolts. No. Oh look, all the bolts have jumped out by themselves now anyway. What I can tell you, all the bolts that hold this casing on are the same length, apart from this one, which is just above, well, just behind 12 o'clock, above the crankshaft pulley. That one's just a little bit longer. If, if this one here is one that holds the casing, just that little bit of extra length. I'm gonna see if this casing separates now. There's a piece just there, I can fit a lever bar. Let's see, something's moving. <laughs> it's a bit springy still. I think I'm gonna to have to prise it somewhere else. Let me just get it between the alternator and the casing. There's another little bit I can actually get on. I think it's going. Yeah, it's coming off. It's coming off! Holy shit! Here we go. That's it. It's off. So all you really have as a gasket is just black silicon sealant. So if you're going to refit this casing, you just want to clean it up, degrease it with some brake cleaner or something, then put some new silicon sealant on it before you put the casing back on. You'd also want to replace the crankshaft front oil seal. You can, easily top, you can easily tap the old one out. There. Right, at this point, I suggest we put the crankshaft bolt back in and just screw it in like finger tight. We can nip it up, and nip it up a little bit. Uh, but when we'd want to spin the engine over, so, this would be a nice and easy way of doing it. So I'll just put that there for the time being. We need to loosen these two bolts on the cam sprockets. There's like a 23 mil spanner size on the camshaft. So you can actually hold the camshafts while you undo these bolts. I'll have a go, see how tight this is. That actually wasn't tight at all. That's all nice and loose now. So I'll loosen this one as well. There, bingo. Okay, God only knows I'm gonna show this. In this hole here, there's like a little tab that releases the, uh, the tensioner. So when you push the screwdriver in here, you push it like upwards. It pushes the tab up, okay? And if you put another screwdriver down where the, the, this little bar is, you can push the tab up, it will release it, then you can prise, whoop, that didn't work, you can prise the whole tensioner unit back, back inside its casing, which isn't going too well. Right, now, now we're fully home, then you can put a pin in the other hole like that, and that will hold it, that will hold it in the retracted position. So now, I can take these two bolts right out, Like that. And this once that bolts out, this is literally falling off. <laughs> There's nothing actually holding it on now. I'll get the other one out. 
Come on. Then both sprockets come off together and I can lift it off the bottom sprocket and there's our chain. It doesn't matter where the sprockets sit on the front of these camshafts because both camshafts are locked in position with our setting bar at the rear. If you did need to remove this oil pump chain, I can't think why you would, but just in case, this tensioner here is actually spring loaded. So you've only got to push that up like that, but I'm pretty sure you'd have to remove this eight mil bolt and remove this tensioner before you could remove this chain. Also, just to know, on the crankshaft, the actual sprockets that hold your oil pump chain and your timing chain, there's no keyway on the, on the crankshaft. It is the bolt which holds everything tight once it's done up. So you can see they're spinning freely and they will move backwards and forwards like that. So before I put this chain back on, if you can see in there where our timing pin is, it's not sitting, it's not butted up against the crankshaft. That's because when I undone the crankshaft pulley bolt, it turned the crankshaft a little bit. So I've now got my socket back onto the crankshaft pulley bolt and I'll turn that round. There, that's butted up as it should be now. The guide on the tensioner side, that's literally held on by a, a dowel now, so you can just remove that. I guess if you were buying a kit, you would get all these guides and everything in the actual kit. I wouldn't, actually wouldn't, wouldn't want to trust, <laughs> trust putting an old one of these back on. I'd want this, this to be new anyway, because this plastic can break up and cause you all sorts of trouble. But I'll put that back on. And this guide is just two 8 mil bolts, straightforward. I shall now pop this chain back onto the engine. It doesn't matter where the chain sits on the sprockets. So first up, we'll lower that chain and we'll, we'll fit it onto the actual crankshaft sprocket first and then up between the guides, like that. It would probably help if you had a bit of an assistant, but now you can just pop your sprockets. They'll click on, but they're not held on very well. So once you get one on, you're probably best getting the bolt in. That way it can't go anywhere. And I'll just do that up finger tight. And the other one, make sure your chain's in the guides properly and still on the crankshaft sprocket. That's on. Whack the bolt in. We don't want to tighten these bolts up. We, we want them just a tiny bit loose at the minute. You can pull the pin out of the tensioner now. There. You see, because these sprockets were loose, now the tension has taken the slack up in the chain, it's moved the sprockets to a nice comfortable position. Now we can tighten these bolts up. Okay, to torque these two cam sprocket bolts up, they are 72 Newton meters. Just for show here, I'm just gonna tighten them up with a bar. <laughs> because this engine isn't going back together, it's a scrap engine, but yeah. If you're doing it properly, it's 72 newton meters. Right, that's them tight. I can't turn the engine over because these sprockets are still loose on the crankshaft. So I'm gonna have to put the pulley on for the time being. <coughs> I'll whack that bolt out. Stick the pulley on. The pulley will literally press up against these sprockets. So when the bolt's done up, everything will be tight. So that'll do for the minute. Need to remove the timing pin from the back of the block. Right, I'm just gonna remove this setting bar. There. I ought to have put the casing back on before I, did, before I put this pulley back on and done this, but I just wanna show this with the casing off. So now I'm gonna turn the engine over two revolutions just so we can see how it all lines back up again. Right, I'm getting pretty close to that two revolutions now. 
So I'm going to whack my timing pin back in the block and turn this around until it butts up against the pin, which it is now. If all is good, this setting bar should slot back into the camshafts. It does on that one nicely. Yep, that's in, that's good enough. Right, I'll whack our pulley back off again. You can assume that I've cleaned up all the surfaces where the casing's gonna bolt up, and I've put a bead, a thin bead of black silicon sealant all the way around. So our camshaft setting bar is in place, and our crankshaft pin is butted up against our crankshaft. We'll refit the casing. Just note, there are a couple of little dowels, one either side, which makes things easier. There. So now it's just a case of refitting all these little eight mil bolts all the way around your casing. Just remember one of these bolts is longer than all the rest, which sits just there above your crankshaft. So we'll get that in. I would say when you're tightening down all these little eight mil bolts to hold this casing on, I'd go around them probably three or four times to make sure they're all done up evenly. You would obviously fit a brand spanking new crankshaft front oil seal. If you don't have a proper tool to fit it in with, then just make sure that the seal is flush and level all the way around. Carefully refit your crankshaft pulley because you don't want to damage the new seal. Remember the pinhole at the bottom needs to sit at six o'clock and if you put the pin in there so you know it's in the right position, refit your crankshaft bolt As I said earlier, it's 100 newton meters plus 90 degrees, so it's pretty damn tight. I'm not gonna talk it up. If it was me doing the job, I wouldn't bother with a torque wrench. I would literally just whack it up nice and tight with the air gun, but that's entirely up to you. Anyway, this pin can come out now. Take out your crankshaft pin as well. And remove your setting bar. I'm gonna spin this engine over two revolutions again because now we've got our cover back on I'm going to make sure everything lines up properly again yeah. I'll tell you that this engine because it actually seized up it's not turning as it should be it, <laughs> it feels like the pistons are dragging in the cylinders <laughs> okay so when our pulley hole gets about 45 degrees before the, the hole it's got to go through with our pin we'll stop there Refit our crankshaft timing pin once again. We'll turn this over until the crankshaft butts up against that pin. That's it. If you've got your crankshaft pulley on right in the first place, that pin should go straight through the pulley and straight into its hole in the casing, like it does. Bingo. This is the moment of truth. The setting bar needs to slot into both these camshafts perfectly. So this side here first, that, that's actually gone straight in, absolutely perfect. Okay, and this side, straight in, perfect, fantastic. As long as that slots into both camshafts nice and easily, we know our timing's good. So for the last time, get that timing pin out and refit your blanking plug. And obviously you can nip that up now. Remove your pulley pin and remove your setting bar. Just for argument's sake, let's say you've timed everything up, you've rotated the engine over two revolutions, you've reset the crankshaft on the timing pin, your crankshaft pin 
is in the, through the crankshaft sprocket properly, but the setting bar doesn't fit into the back of the camshafts properly. Say it's a little, one of the camshafts is a little bit out. All you'd really have to do is crack off both of these just quarter of a turn. They would then become loose on the camshafts. You can then refit this into the back of the camshafts and then retighten both these bolts up. You wouldn't be able to use a torque wrench on them, but you can still do them up pretty tight and get them close to what they should be. Then spin the engine over again and make sure everything lines up again. You'd carry on like that until everything was lined up absolutely perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I think I can honestly say, actually, if you had to replace this chain or just even time it up, just check it, it's not a bad job. But in the car, it is going to be a bit of a nightmare. I certainly, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't, would not want to change one of these in the car. It's nice and easy here on the bench, but as chains go, it's not a bad setup. I quite, I actually quite like that chain as well, the strength of it, because this is this is one chain. Although these aren't the best of engines, flipping neck. Like I said, I've, I've never had ever had one of these chains break, not that I know of. And I've never even had any noisy chains or any problems in whatsoever. And we've got a lot of these cars here, a lot of these engines. So I will say they're good old chains. Anyway, that's how you time up one of these chains. That killed an afternoon, didn't it? Right, that's it till the next time. See ya. Hang on a minute. Flipping heck. That sounds worse than a bloody wheel bearing. <laughs> Holy shit, that's 15 ton. I'm not going more than that. <laughs> nice one. I tell you what, it's not making a noise now. <laughs> Friggin' winner. See ya.